When you see an A380 land at an airport, it catches everyone's attention. People just stare at this aircraft, wondering how this big thing gets into the air. Airlines introduced suites, first-class showers, and even the Etihad residence. Today, we will be exploring this aircraft and what will be happening in the future. Since its first commercial flight in 2007 with Singapore Airlines, the Airbus A380 has flown on all six inhabited continents carrying more than 300 million passengers. It was a development right from the beginning in the 1980s to rival Boeing on its 747. The 747 was the aircraft that changed commercial flying, allowing to lower ticket fares. This also led to the beginning of the new hub and spoke model. By the 1980s, over 200 of these aircrafts were delivered to 100 plus customers. Many other aircraft manufacturers wanted to challenge Boeing. McDonnell Douglas had proposed for the MD-12. However, this would not go anywhere beyond and the design was scrapped. Only the A3A went ahead. The initial name of the A380 was the A3XX announced in 1990. However, once production began in the early 2000s, its name became the A380. Production of this aircraft was delayed and delayed due to many issues with the parts of the aircraft, and also due to the events of September 11, 2001, which made travel demand decline. It finally did its first test flight in 2005 and later its first commercial flight in 2007 when Singapore Airlines flew from Singapore to Sydney. The primary operators of the Airbus A380 were Singapore Airlines, Emirates, Qantas and Lufthansa and later other airlines that placed an order were Air France, ANA British Airways, China Southern, Etihad, Korean Air, Malaysia Airlines, Qatar Airways, and Thai Airways. It is also noted that it fly from Malta leased one aircraft from Singapore Airlines. Some other airlines also placed an order for the A380, but later canceled their orders. These airlines include Virgin Atlantic and Hong Kong Airlines. This could be due to the fact that the aircraft was just too big and did not have the capacity. Therefore, it would come to a surprise that no U.S. carrier ordered the A380, although they did consider it. Many airlines used their A380 as an opportunity to show their customers how far they can go into luxury. Emirates and Qatar Airways had onboard lounges for their premium passengers. Singapore Airlines showed their suites class, which looks more like a hotel room. Etihad Airways introduced a residence suite, Emirates and Etihad introduced shower spas for their first-class passengers. Even the economy class is spacious with a 343 configuration. Although the A380 could fit a lot of passengers and its luxury, it was a challenge for airports to accommodate this big aircraft. This is because airports had to build wider and longer runways, as well as wider taxiways, larger gateways, and the upper deck boarding bridge. New York's John F. Kennedy Airport spent a total of $175 million just for the A380. Even though none of their national airlines flew this aircraft, Furthermore, not many airlines placed an order for the aircraft, however Emirates, on the other hand, placed almost half of all the A380s ordered. By the end of the late 2010s, only Emirates was the airline placing an order for this aircraft. Even Emirates could not handle the A380, and they decided to cut their order from their initial 162 to just 123 aircrafts in 2019 that resulted in Airbus announcing the end of A380 production in 2021 once all of Emirates' aircrafts were delivered. The COVID-19 pandemic led to the A380 suffer even more which was already an aircraft not wanted before the pandemic. At one point, around 90% of the A380s were grounded by nearly every airline this is because of the low passenger traffic. The A380 and its amount of seats would be extremely unprofitable. This led to airlines wanting a smaller plane, and that led to the expansion of twin-engine jets, such as the Airbus A350 and the Boeing 787. 
these aircrafts alone had more than four times of orders compared to the A380. In 2021, Airbus delivered its last aircraft to Emirates marking the end of production at just 254 aircrafts. Air France was the first airline to announce the retirement of their A380s. They had already planned to retire these aircrafts even before the pandemic started, and once the pandemic started, they retired these aircrafts almost immediately. Malaysia Airlines and China's Sutton also said goodbye to this aircraft as they replaced it with newer and more fuel-efficient A350s. Lufthansa, Cater Airways and Etihad said that the aircraft would not come back to service but after travel demand increased, many twin-engine jets on order were delayed due to the pandemic and therefore they had to turn back and rely on this aircraft. The other airlines also returned these aircrafts to service except for Thai Airways and High Fly. Thai Airways has grounded their A380 and has remained on the ground for the past three years as well as their Boeing 747. However, Emirates, the Dubai-based carrier, has no plans to retire these aircrafts from now as they rely on this aircraft a lot funneling millions of passengers through their hub in Dubai. They said that this aircraft could remain until the 2040s. Japan's All Nippon Airways was the last carrier of the A380, and they could also be one of the last airlines flying this aircraft. They also have no plans to get rid of this aircraft. This 70-meter long, 24 meters high aircraft was not a success for Airbus and did not get a profit. Emirates has also pushed Airbus to make a more fuel-efficient A380, which became the A380+, However, the lack of demand for big jets meant that this design was scrapped and would also be another loss for Airbus. You will still have an opportunity to fly on this aircraft if you have not already. This aircraft is expected to continue service well into the 2030s mainly with Emirates and also ANAA. Although this aircraft was unfortunately not a commercial success, it is still an aircraft loved by aviation geeks and passengers. If you have made it all the way through this video, it is clear that you really enjoyed this video. So make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel and make sure you view my other channels on YouTube.